This is Final Fantasy. 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 Wait, what? Yep, all of these are Final Fantasy, and I'm going to show you exactly why. Final Fantasy has been around since 1987 when the first game was released for the regular Nintendo system. It was basically a Dungeons & Dragons campaign where you played as four warriors of light who were trying to save the world. Now this isn't too different from other games at the time like Dragon Warrior and Ultima, but as sequels released, the core elements of the franchise began to form. Since then, there have been 16 iterations, and counting, of Final Fantasy, each with a unique world, plot, gameplay system, and cast of characters. While they are all in the same franchise, each installment can serve as a player's first. In fact, the best way to connect with a Final Fantasy fan is to ask them, hey, which one was your first? And they will excitedly tell you. Every fan has a different answer as to what needs to be in a game for it to be truly Final Fantasy. Engrossing story, powerful music, lovable characters, and sure, all of these are important. But these things are in other games too. To better understand, without getting too academic, I'd like to go over the ontology of Final Fantasy. Ontology is the study of being and existence. That is, everything that exists can be categorized according to ontology, categorized into properties and elements. Now, everything that exists has these two categories. But there's a big difference between what we call core elements of something and the properties of that thing. For instance, a car is going to have broad elements that are amplified by its properties. Now, at its core, a car has wheels, but it has properties like two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Now, when it comes to brands and models, there's a fundamental difference between a Toyota and a Lexus, right? A Toyota is seen as chiefly reliable, whereas a Lexus is considered more of a luxury vehicle. Both are cars, but they have different interests. Now, for most people, it's usually the properties that will distinguish a thing from the competitors. The differences in amenities between a Toyota and a Lexus, for example. Now, these are properties that emphasize the basic difference in their fundamental elements. Got it? With Final Fantasy, most people know the franchise primarily by its properties. Properties are going to include things like types of weapons, Ultima Weapon, Ragnarok, for example. Properties would also include summoned monsters or gods or espers or icons, depending on the game, like Bahamut, Leviathan, Ifrit, Shiva, and others. Also, properties would actually include this guy, and this guy, this guy, and that guy. All the SIDs are properties. Believe it or not, properties would also include unique creatures of Final Fantasy. Beloved creatures like Moogles and Chocobos, Behemoths, Tonberries, and Moombas. By the way, whatever happened to the Moombas, they were awesome. These all distinguish the games from other RPGs. Of course, not all Final Fantasies have these properties, and they don't have to. They don't make a game uniquely Final Fantasy by having them or not. But they do have to cater to broader elements. Let's talk about those. Everything that exists is composed of basic elements. So when it comes to Final Fantasy, what are those elements? Those must-haves, that special sauce that has to be in a Final Fantasy game in order for it to be Final Fantasy. When a recent interview, beloved producer and director of Final Fantasy XIV, as well as producer of Final Fantasy XVI, Yoshi P was asked that exact question. And he said, you need to have the best story, you need to have the best graphics, you need to have the best battle system, you need to have a lot of content, and you need to have the chocobos, you need to have moogles, you need to have a great sound, and that makes a Final Fantasy. And if you're missing even one of them, the fans will hate you forever. Whew. So let's assume he's right and compile all those elements into categories. First up, a battle system. Final Fantasy must have a stat-based battle system, even if those stats are only found in menus. Heralding its D&D roots with the kind of min-maxing that makes accountants go wild. Beyond that, battle systems can feature whatever properties the devs at the time want. Usually the properties will feature some commonalities like battle classes, jobs, magic, or melee fighters. But each new installment of the franchise features a totally new and unique system. So is Final Fantasy turn-based or action? Yes, to both. Is the party player controlled or AI controlled? Well, depends on the game. 
Anything is subject to change because it's all dependent on the developers. These are all properties, not elements, and they are interchangeable, but they all emphasize a core element, battle. Let's go. But even beyond battle, the way that a game plays is also uniquely Final Fantasy because the developers are committed to immersion. Immersion both of gameplay and of presentation. Since even the earliest days on the NES and Super Nintendo, Final Fantasy has prioritized player immersion through technology, namely graphics and sound. Final Fantasy VII Remake producer Yoshinori Kitase told Game Informer, whenever we're releasing a Final Fantasy title on new hardware, there's always the desire to create a new RPG style that would hopefully become the standard of that generation. That's the sentiment we uphold when we're creating and developing the titles. By achieving cutting edge graphics, Final Fantasy builds a fully fleshed out world that a player can fully invest in. The same can be said for music. With every installment, Final Fantasy has pushed the boundaries of how music can affect the player's experience. With its infectious melodies, Final Fantasy has sent players soaring into hype. Whoa, a choir! What? And into depressive states. Even today, three notes still send fans spiraling over the one girl they could not save. Jaw-dropping graphics and soundtracks combined with compelling gameplay resulting in some of the most immersive and memorable experiences that a player can have, creating first-person memories through sight, sound, and touch. That's research, baby read my dissertation. In so doing, Final Fantasy's commitment to immersion stays with players long after the credits roll. But what exactly stays with players? This brings us to maybe the most important element of every Final Fantasy game. It's the thing that most fans will talk about first when they are discussing Final Fantasy, and it is the compelling narrative rooted in a lore-dense world. It's the story. Listen to my story. Anyone who has played a Final Fantasy game can recall a fantastic world brimming with detail, history, and character. Whether it's the rivalries of religious groups in Final Fantasy X or the careless consumption of the planet's energy in VII, tales of loss and fire and faith are set to the backdrop of a world in struggle. And it's up to a group of chosen heroes controlled by the player to bring order to the world's chaos. But a ton of games have a story like this, so what's so special about Final Fantasy? In a Kotaku article, Final Fantasy creator Hironobu Sakaguchi was asked what he thought made a Final Fantasy game. His response was illuminating. After first joking that any game with a blue window and white text could be a Final Fantasy, he said, A Final Fantasy is what is born after those who live intensely run across a multitude of unbeaten paths to reach the same goal in the end. He continued by saying, after all, we've always strived to do new things, and I'd like it if we kept doing that. So if change is the only constant that constrains the developers of Final Fantasy, it makes sense that each game would be different. However, what Sakaguchi said regarding developers could also be said about the heroes in the narratives themselves. In each of the stories, the heroes or the warriors of light are those who live intensely, running across a multitude of unbeaten paths to reach the same goal in the end. That common goal, that end, was revealed in the climax of the very first Final Fantasy. At the end of the first Final Fantasy, the four player-controlled heroes face off against the big bad chaos, only to discover they've done this countless times before and lost. This was due to chaos calling in an 11th hour audible, a last second of the game Hail Mary in which his evil associates, the four fiends, sent chaos back in time 2,000 years, thus enacting a time loop. Thus this whole story just has kept going on and on and on. That is until this time, this time when you, the player, have taken control. This time, you follow Chaos back into the past and take him and the Four Fiends down, breaking the time loop forever. The iteration of the unending cycle you play is the final one. That is, it's the final fantasy. <laughs> Look, I know, it's a little lame to say out loud, but hear me out. This element of a narrative where heroes break some oppressive, unending cycle is the key to determining whether a game is actually Final Fantasy or just shares properties with it. Here's the cycles broken in each one, ending the time loop of chaos. 
the end of imperial oppression, the end of darkness' grip, the end of hatred and rage through redemption and justice, the end of nihilism and the inevitability of the void, an end to the oppression of the self confronting nihilism and fascism with meaning and purpose, ending the oppression of the planet and restoring the cycle of existence, ending the succession of witches, ending even more rampant nihilism, ending an unjust religious cycle of sacrifice, ending the continual resurgence of evil forces, the end of an endless cycle of war, the end of fate and predetermined destiny, the end of the cycle of despair, the end of a flawed legacy of kingship and cycle of divine war, the end of the legacy of the crystals. Each one of these installments is the end of a cycle that has oppressed their respective worlds, and you, the player, will put a stop to that cycle once and for all. As it says at the end of Final Fantasy I, you, the player, are the warrior of life. All this to say there are a lot of things that define what a Final Fantasy is, but just as no object can be solely defined by its properties, neither can Final Fantasy be solely defined by chocobos, moogles, or specific gameplay styles. And yes, it could even look like Call of Duty. Instead, at its most basic level, Final Fantasy is a game that pushes the boundaries of player immersion through graphics, sound, and world design, using familiar and beloved properties in a narrative that is in the final iteration of some oppressive cycle. Now that's what I would argue a Final Fantasy is, but what do you think? What did I leave out? What didn't make sense? Am I full of it, or am I on to something here? Sound off in the comments and let's see if we can come up with something better together. Also, make sure to like and subscribe as well as follow me on social media. Thanks for watching and walk tall, my friends. See you next time.